Welcome to the Conti Surveying Studio. So in today's video, we'll be exploring a critical yet often overlooked aspect of MEP works. That is how to size cables correctly. Whether you're a QS or an MEP engineer, understanding cable sizing is very essential for both design accuracy and cost control. So as a QS, it is not that required to you know do you get into the design aspects but if you have that understanding if you have that knowledge it is a good add-on to your knowledge and you can also advise to the designers that such and such cable sizes will not be sufficient for such and such type of cables going from this tb to this tb because of such and such reasons so cable prices will keep on changing with respect to the sizes so that is really important so why does cable sizing matter again as i said incorrect cable selection can lead to overheating voltage drop system failures and even fire hazards and for qs it is crucial because cable sizing will affect both the boq quantity and the pricing some key parameters for cable sizing these are load current voltage drop short circuit capacity derating factors and cable route so I'm not going into deep uh, on the technicalities of these. So just understand that these are the parameters that is used to determine a cable size. These are the step-by-step -step process for identifying the cable size. And I'll be showing it through an example also. I made a Excel template. So identify the load first, then determine the permissible voltage drop, apply the degrading factors, Select the cable size from the table, standard tables, check the short circuit ratings, final selection with correct insulation. So there are basically some steps that need to be done. I'll explain it in the Excel template. Some common mistakes that designers make. So these are some using some thumb rules blindly that they see from the net. They just take that as the correct. They don't check if it is right or wrong. Then ignoring the voltage drops for long runs, overlooking derating factors, not verifying the protection settings. So these are some common mistakes that designers make. Some tools and software that is used to measure, like identify which cable size to be used. So that is ETAP, Ecodial, CanEco. Then the manual Excel sheet is there. The manufacturer's data sheet is there. Usually designers use these softwares. So as per the QS perspective, BOQ specs must align with design. So bigger cables means higher cost. So QS must interface e early with the MEP teams. Some final tips will be always to refer to the local codes, use accurate manufacturer data and plan the cable routings in an early stage. So a PPT is over here. I'll just go through the excel template so this is a template that i have prepared so there are different steps here i have made two sheets for copper if cable and aluminum cable the major difference would be this part that is a resistance based on this the calculations will be changing so here first step is to know the load what the load the cable will be carrying in kilowatt the voltage if it is three phase which is 415 volt the power factor which is usually commonly taken as 0 0.85 to 9 so i've taken it as 0 0.9 so we have to choose whether it is a single phase or three phase requirement here this is neutral and earth requirement based on this option our core will be changing so here if you see i have kept it as no but if you are changing neutral required as yes automatically the core changes to 3.5 and also if earth is required it will change to four so let's keep it as no for both phase multiplier so if it is one it is it will be one for single phase and root three that is 1.732 for three phase since we are chosen as three phase i have kept it as 1.732 then we need to calculate the current so current is b3 into thousand though kilowatt into 1000 divided by voltage into power factor into the phase multiplier we will get the calculated current then the distance that is cable needs to be laid between the different main db or the distribution db between the two distribution boards how much is the distance that we need to calculate five is the permissible voltage drop percentage that is the 
common practice. Again, the rating factor is also taken as 0.85 as per industry standards. Then we need to calculate the adjusted current, which is B10 by B13, that is calculated current by the rating factor. So this will be the actual current that needs to be carried by the cable. So we need to see in this table based on the core type of the cable and size what are the different cable maximum cable amperes current carrying capacity of each based on that only we finalize the sizes because through this uh, steps we can only determine the minimum cable size the maximum cable size will depend upon this table so we'll see that now so next is so we got it as adjusted current as 181 so this is the main thing that we need to check now so here we need to keep on changing cable size so before that let's see what are this below resistance so one this will keep changing for copper it is 1.91 resistance and for aluminum it is 3.08 that is the main difference between these two materials and then we have to calculate the resistance of selected cable that will be b16 by b15 B so this resistance divided by the selected cable size then voltage drop we have to calculate that will be 2 into b10 calculated current into b11 the distance into b17 the resistance of the selected cable divided by by 1000 so we'll get the voltage drop and then finally the voltage drop percentage which is the voltage drop divided by voltage b4 we need to finally check if this what we have got is less than this permissible so for example i am changing this to let's say 4 so after changing this to 4 c voltage drop is 8.89 which is more than the permissible so we cannot use 4 let's check it with 6 again it is increasing 5.93 then we have to choose the next standard one next will be 10 mm square so when we chose m10 it is fine 3.56 it is less than 5. Now we need to check. So minimum size that we can use is 10. Now let's understand what is the maximum size. And that is the selected cable size that will be required. So for a 3 core cable, copper cable, what size will carry a current of 181? So for a copper cable, 3 core one, if you see 25 will carry 131 only. 35 square mm will carry only 160 but 50 will carry 201 which is more than 181 so we can choose 3 core 50 as our cable so 3 core 50 uh, for this purpose is we can use but if you see in case of aluminium let's see it as 4 it is more let's put it as 6 it is more than 5 even 10 is also more so in this case we can put the next standard cable which is 16 that is less so in case of aluminium for a three core cable for 181 if you see 25 will carry only 164 but 35 can carry 200 so three core 35 so for this scenario if we are choosing copper as the material it will be the three core 50 cable and if it is aluminium it will be 3 core 35 cable. So, hope this video was informative. Thanks a lot for watching. If you need this uh, Excel sheet, do comment. Uh, I can share it with you. Any of my social media channels, because I am not sure if your email ID can be commented in the YouTube comments. You can go to LinkedIn or you can message me in LinkedIn, my Instagram, YouTube channel. Uh, sorry instagram account or facebook account or everything is put up in the description all the links to that you can go anywhere and just message me i can share it with you so please like share and subscribe to quantity surveying studio for more practical construction insights thanks